Oh boy, this movie. If you've seen the previous reviews in this series, you'll know that I am not a fan of this movie. 2015 was a very interesting year for Star Wars. This was perhaps the most hyped movie in existence. The internet went crazy over the existence of another Star Wars episode, something that continued the story of the original trilogy after it ended. The original cast was going to come back for another ride, and everything was going to kick ass. What I will give Disney is they did the best job marketing this movie. Although given we were told there would be no Episode 7 by George, it seems like this movie would have sold no matter what. And beneath its visual flair and exciting first time in the seat in the theatre, this movie is actually pretty shallow as a film, and I'll explain why, don't you worry about that. I don't know whether I can be as objective as possible. This movie pisses me off so much to the point that it makes me want to kill the higher ups at Disney. So let's review this piece of shit. Talk about underwhelming. Let's start with the biggest criticism the film has received. It's unimaginary and safe approach in its story structure, as it pretty much copied the first movie in the series. I agree with this criticism to the end. This is fucking Star Wars. You literally can do a lot with this universe. The only limit is your imagination. But I guess the writers for this movie's imagination is so shallow that they decided to steal and plagiarize the story structure from a previous movie in the franchise. They might as well have actually remade the original movie or did a complete reboot where they restart the universe and do everything from the ground up. If they did that, that might have actually been excusable. I've heard people try to defend this act of plagiarism, and I'm not convinced by any of their arguments. Cosmonaut Variety Hour compared the lack of imagination in The Force Awakens to Stranger Things, to where he describes the show as having no original ideas at all, and it's still considered a good show. False equivalence. Okay, let me try to explain why there's outrage over The Force Awakens stealing and plagiarizing and why everybody likes Stranger Things despite the lack of imaginations. It is because Stranger Things did not invalidate anything it may have copied because it exists in its own timeline. It is not a continuation of anything aside from itself since it is an episodic Netflix show. The Force Awakens on the other hand is a sequel to what it ripped off. It invalidated the triumph the Rebels achieved at the end of Return of the Jedi because the First Order just destroyed the government that replaced the Empire like 30 years later. And while history may repeat itself in real life, it's fucking insulting from a storytelling perspective. A sequel's purpose is to expand the universe and continue the story. Instead, it glossed over the universe and reset the status quo to Rebels vs Empire essentially. Speaking of which, the world building is fucking terrible. One of the worst Star Wars movies in this regard. By the end, we practically know nothing about the universe if this is your first Star Wars movie. This film doesn't establish or flesh out the universe. This is probably based on J.J. Abrams' style. He loves to make us go crazy with questions because of his shitty mystery box crap. Let me tell him firsthand that this is a terrible way to write a story. Even with a direct plot, J.J. Abrams intentionally left massive plot holes to generate theories. This film directly refuses to answer questions just so you will buy your ticket for the next movie. It's sleazy how they approach this movie. Let me go through the entire plot itself and explain why it's awful. The film gives the most uninformative opening crawl I've ever seen in a movie. It does nothing except to tell you to get excited. Essentially Luke Skywalker, one of the reasons people bought their ticket, has vanished and an unspecified ally somehow has a ridiculous, convoluted map that leads to Luke. So essentially, a newly introduced Poe Dameron gets the stupid map from an unnamed old guy. The map is very important and needs to be delivered to Leia in the Resistance. Then the First Order show up, essentially the rip-off Empire. The film awkwardly also introduces us to Finn, but because of his uniform matching all the others, his introduction is a bit off. It's not the worst introduction to a character ever, but it could have been shot better. Essentially, Poe kills Finn's friend, which is awkward to watch if you know who he is. The external source material actually makes this film worse, because although it explains things, the explanations are laughably terrible. So anyways, Poe gives the map to his droid BB-8 and tells him to roll the fuck away. Does this sound familiar? For some reason, 
he decides to not run off himself and sticks around to get caught by the First Order. I will admit that the Force Stasis thing was pretty cool though. Poe is interrogated and reveals the information about the BB unit. Finn rescues Poe for some reason and they both try to book it, forgetting to detach the cable to the TIE fighter they steal. They crash land on Jakku where Poe is believed to be dead in the worst death fake out in a story. Just kidding, that title goes to Chewie. So Finn wanders around and happens to bump into BB-8 and Rey. Rey is established to be a lonely scavenger on the planet, and she took in the droid and protected it. Rey has been labelled a Mary Sue by the fans with a distaste for this movie. I agree, Rey gets very little development. There are not enough times where she struggles and seems to do everything to near perfection on her first try. People try to defend this act of poor writing by saying that Anakin and Luke are Mary Sue's too. Not only does this counter argument come out of nowhere, since nobody made a complaint about these two before The Force Awakens came out, but it's false. You can check out the video where I debunk Cosmonaut Variety Hour, who argued the same thing. Link in description. To sum up what I said for those who didn't bother to click on the link, Anakin and Luke went through tons of character development. Plus there's the little known fact that Anakin ultimately lost in the end. Rey's lack of flaws are apparent when she flies the Millennium Falcon with no prior experience and the pair fly off to Jakku. Then Han Solo and Chewie randomly stumble into the Falcon by chance and meet Finn and Rey. Along with everything else, they restart Han's character arc to being a cocky smuggler again. Lame! Of course, there are two gangs out to kill him, but of course they escape. Han decides for some reason that they need a more secure ship to get the droid to the resistance. So they stop off at an unnamed planet to talk to a character called Mars Kanata. Mars is a cheap clone of Yoda from a design and writing perspective. It's also never explained who she is exactly. Finn decides to run away because he's not interested in the fight. An example of the hero runs away but comes back to save the day cliche. Fucking hell. The First Order and another system also managed to blow up the New Republic with Starkiller Base, aka the Death Star 3. Of course, the First Order finds the Millennium Falcon somehow, with no explanation. If we saw the thugs put a tracking beacon on the Falcon, that would have been just fine. So point is, Rey gets captured and the Resistance shows up. Han and Leia reunite and they don't flesh out their separation much, they just gloss over it. After Finn and Poe reunite, the Resistance has a meeting on how to blow up the third Death Star. Han has this questionable plan to land onto the Death Star 3 through hyperspace, which is absurd. Once on the station, they stumble into Captain Phasma, a character hyped up in the promotional material but does fuck all in this movie aside from unwillingly helping the good guys and then getting dumped in a trash compactor. Meanwhile, Rey is interrogated and Kylo Ren finds out that she's strong with the Force when a mind probe fails. Kylo Ren talks to his master Snoke, the worst villain ever about it, and he tells him to bring him to Rey. But before this can happen, Rey does a mind trick somehow and makes the Stormtrooper release her. She bumps into Finn and crew, which is just a huge coincidence, and Han tries to set charges. Kylo Ren was established to be Han and Leia's son earlier in the movie, so the two talk, and then Han dies when Kylo Ren stabs him with his lightsaber. The build up to his death isn't horrible, it's just underwhelming. God damn that could have been handled better. So as Poe and the Strike Force try to blow up the third Death Star, Finn and Rey bump into Kylo Ren. I just love how people in this movie just stumble into each other. It's exactly like a Greek legend like the Odyssey. So the three have a match to the death. Kylo Ren slashes his lightsaber up Finn's spine, resulting in nothing but a torn jacket in the next movie. But Rey somehow overcomes the odds because Mare fucking Sue. Now I should mention that Kylo Ren is wounded, which is the film's attempted explanation to have him lose, which doesn't work at all because the character that beat him, Rey, had far less experience than Finn. Kylo Ren is defeated and the most plot convenient ground split happens. Rey and Chewie make it back with the unconscious Finn, Leia immediately goes to hug Rey and not Chewie which is really awkward, R2-D2 who was shoehorned into this movie, turns on and reveals that he has the following map to Luke Skywalker. To which Rey goes to the planet and we are met with the legend himself, but then the movie ends. Fuck off. The movie fails to make a satisfying ending, and instead drops an undeserved cliffhanger. 
Republic Commando earned its cliffhanger. The Force Awakens did not. There's so many problems with the story from poor world building, plot holes, story structure, unoriginality among other things. This was pretty much the go to movie for how not to make a movie. This movie doesn't care about timeless quality, it just wants you to buy a ticket for the next movie. And while I did want to see the next movie, they should have made it more, but not too much close ended. The film does have its moments, I like their dynamic between Finn and Poe, very likeable, and there should have been more Finn and Poe moments, but that isn't enough to save the movie from all its problems. I'm going to give 3 points to the story. Well, at least the film is shot pretty well. One of J.J. Abrams' few strengths is making his films look nice. The OG-6 is better, but for someone trying to adapt the source material, it looks amazing. Every shot is pretty good. Like I said with the previous reviews, you could pause at any frame and make an oil painting with it. Some amazing shots include Rey scavenging from an old Star Destroyer. This is one of the few times there is visual storytelling. And there is also when the Millennium Falcon flies for the first time in years. It looks amazing to see the ship fly again, even if it is really really fan servicey. And that's pretty much it for cinematography. Let's talk about editing. This movie is paced too fucking fast. It has the Michael Bay approach of keep moving, keep fighting, keep talking, and don't stop for anything. The film doesn't slow down at all. The reason for perhaps most of the story sucking is because they don't stop for the important stuff. They don't stop to world build because that's lame, get to the space battles. No politics because that's boring, get to the explosions. No character development because that's pointless, get to the one-liners. This really harms the movie. Fuck the idiot who focused too much on the spectacle. This film ignores everything that makes a Star Wars story good except for the spectacle and the editing doesn't help. I'm going to give 5 points to this segment. The effects are great. One of the undeniably coolest moments is when Kylo Ren force freezes Poe. The force freeze thing is amazing and I'm curious to see how they did it. Even the smallest things like the bread Ray eats, that looks a bit like how they make popcorn, is attention to detail at its finest. They actually experimented a lot with the bread to make an effective practical effect. The effects are really good, they're on par on what you would expect from Star Wars. Okay, now for the visual design. I'm not impressed. It wasn't just the plot they plagiarized, they literally failed to come up with new designs for planets. Jakku is a Tatooine ripoff, Takodana is an Endor ripoff, Starkiller Base is a ripoff between the Death Star and Hoth, and even Hosnia Prime, which appeared for a few seconds, was so similar to Coruscant that it left people wondering whether it was Coruscant, since the film never bothered explaining what planet it was. People make excuses for this movie, saying that there was nothing else to choose from. Every terrain's been done. Bullshit. They had plenty to choose from. What about a beach planet? What about a polluted junk planet? Why not have an underground mining colony? Why not do something like Mars or Venus where the air is not breathable or it's too hot or whatever? That's not to say that you couldn't have a city planet for example, as you could just revisit Coruscant. A quick search on Google on actual discovered planets could present interesting ideas. There's a diamond planet, there's a pink planet, and a planet that rains glass. There was plenty to choose from, but they didn't bother getting creative, so they just stuck to what was familiar. But as well as ripping off planets, the other designs look wrong. All the aliens in this movie, aside from the previously introduced ones, are lame. They look nothing like Star Wars. All of them look like they belong in a literal freak show, as I'm talking about the ones that the Elephant Man would have made a living in. I mean look at this! If you saw these aliens in another movie, you wouldn't associate it with Star Wars at all. I don't understand why the only aliens they brought back were those of the returning fan servicey characters like Chewbacca, Naya Numb, and Admiral Akbar. Where are all the Twi'leks? Where are all the Rodians? Where are all the Duros? I mean, what the hell? Despite Snoke turning out to be the Emperor in the ninth movie, that obviously wasn't the original plan. Thus, Snoke is still a ripoff of Palpatine. In looks unknown, he is the dirtiest example of plagiarism I've ever seen. And Kylo Ren is in fact a triple ripoff. The original three that were stolen include Darth Vader, Jason Solo, and Revan. 
It's insane. In fact, this movie is so unoriginal that they even took scrapped aspects of the original trilogy. BB-8 was just a scrap design of what R2-D2 was gonna look like. It would have been excusable if he was just a minor background character, but he's the main companion droid to the good guys. So don't make him sound, look, or feel like R2-D2, and C-3PO2 for that matter. As for the sets, it's quite unremarkable. Along with the planet aesthetics they stole, the sets look too much like the original trilogy, only blander, way blander. There is a limited amount of colors, colors that we've already seen. It's pathetic. Sets such as all the Jakku locations just look like the Tusken Raider village in Attack of the Clones. Not original. Starkiller Base is just Hoth mixed in with the Death Star. Not original. These sets blow. It blows more than the Tsar Bomba. I'm going to give three points to this segment. Daisy Ridley plays Mare Ray Sue. Like most Mary Sue's, she sways everyone over, wins everything on her first attempt, and hardly has any type of arc aside from being more awesome. She is a poor first attempt at a female protagonist in a Star Wars movie. Ridley isn't given a character, she's given a pathetic excuse for one. So there's not really much she needs to do, aside from being more awesome at everything. Her performance is boring. John Boyega plays Black Comic Relief. The idiots who scorn Jar Jar for being a racial stereotype should shut the fuck up, especially when The Force Awakens came along and presented a character whose only character traits are being black and a comic relief. John Boyega does put up a convincing American accent, but his performance is comically bad. He doesn't do much to differentiate himself from all the other black comic relief characters. His only good stuff comes from his banter with Poe. Oscar Isaac plays the all-American pilot, perhaps the most cliché of the sequel trio. The character doesn't have as much of an obnoxious screen presence all because he's not in the movie that much. Oscar Isaac is pretty much a secondary character, being a side character in Black Comic Relief story. His chemistry with that character is great, but all of his other scenes are forgettable. At the start before he meets Black Comic Relief, Isaac doesn't have a lot of personality to them. There is a little bit, but not much. Harrison Ford plays Han Solo's replicant. This is the most offensive, disgusting interpretation of a real Star Wars character I have ever seen. Oh wait, Harrison Ford is an obnoxious guy who didn't want to be there, and unlike the originals, I can't blame him. He probably knows that his lame replicant will ruin childhoods, which it did as his character was given the 180 reverse treatment and Ford does nothing to compensate. Adam Driver plays Tantrum Throwing Crybaby. Adam Driver unmasks is the least intimidating looking bad guy ever. He doesn't even fit the part for a bad guy. What an absurd casting choice. Charlotte Boff was a better casting choice for fuck's sake. Adam Driver looks nothing like Carrie Fisher or Harrison Ford. Adam Driver gives a cartoonishly bad villain comparable to a movie like Space Chimps. He's not a threat, or at least not until after his first tantrum. That happens early in the film. You ruined it. Dom Hell Gleason plays Tarkin 2.0. What an offensively bad ripoff. This actor is fucking annoying. He's not scary. He looks like he belongs in a Harry Potter movie as one of the Weasleys. Peter Cushing looks like an actual bad guy. His ripoff does not. Every smaller actor, like Carrie Fisher and Gwendolyn Christie, suck. Mark Hamill's only job was to stare. That's what a fucking unpaid background extra would do. But Hamill was paid millions for this one movie. What the hell? I'm going to give two points to the acting. What the hell happened? We go from Revenge of the Sith to this shit. The music is so forgettable. It's like John Williams put everything he got into Revenge of the Sith and come The Force Awakens, he couldn't come up with anything fresh or new. That's probably what happened anyways. The music I did notice just sound like earlier compositions in the series. John Williams must have been stuck with this crap. I mean, The Force Awakens is very unimpressive, so I'm not surprised John couldn't come up with anything new. I can't remember much from The Force Awakens soundtrack, I just remember loud noise. That's inexcusable for the soundtrack for a Star Wars movie. One of Star Wars' best traits is the excellent soundtrack. The soundtrack for this movie isn't bad, it's just bland and empty. 
there should be at least one kick-ass track to the movie, and since there's not, that's pathetic. As for the normal sound effects, I guess they aren't bad, they're implemented well, but there's just nothing new. Just recycling old sound effects without creating anything original. What little new sound effects there was, it's either forgettable or sounds nothing like Star Wars. Sound effects on Jakku sound weird. I can't put my finger on it. They just don't sound anything like Star Wars. This goes into my previous point. Nothing looks like Star Wars. They probably should have just gotten George Lucas to approve everything at the very least. Especially since Disney did not and never did understand Star Wars. I'm going to give three points to this segment. Why did Disney have to take over? Now that we're stuck with these idiots who make the most buffoonish, worst, least common sense decisions for the sake of money and only money, we need someone else in charge. It's not just the movies, as the books became essential material to understand the movies, the TV shows being Disney sized to hell, with the exception of maybe The Mandalorian, but I haven't seen that yet, so don't spoil it. And worst of all, the video games were licensed to Electronic Arts. The company voted worst company in America twice, and to this day everybody hates. The fact that Disney even considered EA for a mere second paints the picture of a heartless corporate entity wanting to milk money for you. Thankfully, it's backfired after a certain film from 2017 became widely unpopular. But that's a story for next time. The Force Awakens has earned a total of 16 points out of 50, equaling a 3.2 out of 10 score. The first bad Star Wars movie left nothing going for it except the anticipation for the next movie in the trilogy, which we all know sucked like shit. But that's a story for later. I'm JJ Plagiarisms, and until next time, what are stories about mystery boxes? Your city lies in